Hello everybody, this is an update for the video I did yesterday about the alleged leak of classified slides from the Pentagon. Um, in that previous video I talked about uh, several things. One, if I thought the slides were legitimate and not a fake, and I also talked about the information that was presented in those slides and what that could tell us about the current situation in Ukraine right now. Uh, long story short, um, the numbers and statistics given in those slides did validate uh, previous statements I had made, particularly about HIMARS. Um, previously, I'd argued that um, guided munitions for HIMARS are ex in extremely short supply, and we cannot realistically supply more than 12. HIMARS launchers. If we sent more than 12, we would not be able to adequately provide munitions for them, so it wouldn't make sense to have more than 12. And at the same time, that proves that Russia has destroyed some, because if they hadn't destroyed any, that would mean there were 30 HIMARS launchers in Ukraine right now, and that just does not make any sense based off of the data we're seeing, that they have maybe 14 to 20 rounds a day and it just it does not make sense to have more launchers than you have uh, rounds for them it's like 30 soldiers with uh 10 bullets to split and to share between them however the big thing i'm going to talk about today is um it's come to light where this leak origin uh, originated from yesterday i analyzed just based on uh, what we saw in the photos i believed that these were taken by someone who's actually present in the brief um, or at least worked in one of the staff sections that attends those briefs. And for whatever reason, he had taken photos. Um, it was, I speculated yesterday that it was entirely likely that he did not intentionally leak these photos. That he had, for whatever reason, taken these photos. That was breaking the rules, but he had taken them for some, those photos for some reason and they just spilled out into the open internet by accident. That is um, roughly... What seems to have happened? So from the chatter I've seen online, on Twitter and Gab, um, this appears these files were first seen, I mean, at first people thought they originated on 4chan, which a lot of leaks do start on 4chan, but apparently it was not 4chan, it was actually a Discord server, um, and that community has since been deleted. The original files have been deleted, however people had saved them hundreds of times by that point, so quite a few of them are still floating around on the internet. Um, there is one specific Discord um, user. His name is uh, Luca. He apparently, according to him, uh, this, w this started as an argument. There was a person in this Discord server arguing about Ukraine, and unfortunately this was a person who had incised knowledge of what was going on in Ukraine, and to prove that he was right and the people he was arguing with or were wrong, he uploaded classified documents. So apparently he had done this, not, or uh, when he did this, he believed this was just to prove his point, and these would not go outside of that Discord server, which was a huge mistake. Um, some of them did get outside that Discord server. Now, this sounds like a pretty fantastic story, however, it makes sense because um, if we look also at the timeline, because there were two separate batches of documents leaked. There was that first small batch of about 10 files that uh, some of which I'd found and talked about yesterday. But then after that, basically 24 hours after that, there was a much even, there was an even larger release of leaked documents. And so what seems to have happened was that when those first few images went viral, some people that were, including Luca, who was on that original conversation, realized, oh crap, this guy was not lying. He was t absolutely telling the truth. He did, in fact, have inside knowledge, and these are real. These are real documents. And it's not, it's not as absurd as it sounds. Uh, people leaking classified info for a stupid reason is, is, a, is an ongoing problem for multiple countries. Um, for example, there can be a guy who's upset that uh, a tank in a video game is presented wrong, and to prove it, he'll go into that chat he's in and upload the blueprints to the tank itself. 
Um, so this is not unprecedented, something like this happening. The way the Pentagon, the Biden administration, and the mainstream news have responded to this is interesting. Um, they're very fixated on the fact that one of these slides was apparently altered to exaggerate Ukrainian losses and downplay Russian losses. And in fact, I have that, um, that edit here, somewhere here. Um, you can see these two these two um, images side by side, basically someone had just swapped the digits to make smaller numbers look like larger numbers. It was a very lazy edit. Um, I, it doesn't appear that was the original image that was on Discord. Someone later who had copied it and shared it edited this for whatever reason. It was, just, it was a silly thing to do, however, that does not discredit the overall documents themselves. And no one, besides that one point, no one seems in an official capacity or in the media seems to really even dispute that these are valid documents. And really they're right, especially now that there's so many of them, because you could maybe conceivably fake a couple pages, but to fake that many and do it convincingly, that's a huge amount of work, and there have been. Um, and I included some screenshots in the article, which I'll link in the, underneath the video, but people have done work to verify the information presented in these slides. Um, they are real units of weapons shipments. They reference did actually happen as far as we can tell with open source material. So these, as far as an outside observer who's not in the Pentagon can tell, these are in fact real. However, this does not discount the possibility because one of the things I did speculate about yesterday was that this could in fact be uh, military deception. This could be a deliberate leak to make the enemy, make the Russians think one thing when we're actually doing something else. However, I think that's unlikely just because the, um, the public embarrassment and bad publicity just outweighs whatever benefit the weapons leaking these. So the more I see of this story, the more I think this was a genuine leak. However, I also tend to believe the explanation of how it's happened on Discord because the original images that were shared were so sloppy and there was, um, as I mentioned in the first video, there were a lot of the guys, he left personal possessions within the frame of the photo which could be used to tie the leak back to him. It was just a very stupid and weird thing to do which makes me think he wasn't deliberately leaking them to the whole world. He was just in the heat of the moment. He was arguing with people. He was uploading these documents thinking they wouldn't go public. And that's typically how spillage happens. People do something stupid not realizing that it could escalate far beyond what they ever intended. Now, the other thing I want to bring up in this video is that, and other people have commented on this as well, that the figures, the unaltered figures, are uh, that are shown for casualties and losses are similar to what other pro-Ukrainian sources have said, like uh, um, Onyx, excuse me, Oryx, which is alarming because we have this perception of the Pentagon and the U.S. military that they use this high-tech Star Wars, um, Tom Clancy book style um, technology to get super accurate data. And until now, that was a perception we all could have believed. But in reality, they're not doing that. What they're doing is they're just going on the internet. These guys who give these briefings to General Milley, just to the most important people in the United States Armed Forces, they're just looking on the internet for what pro-Ukraine sources are saying and copying those figures into these briefings. Unfortunately, based on my personal experience, I do believe this is something they're doing. Because when it's your own war when it's your own soldiers fighting. You can make some attempts to verify um, enemy casualties, and of course you know what your own casualties are most of the time in normal circumstances, or can at least roughly estimate in a given moment what your casualties are, even if they're high. 
but when it's another country you have to just rely on we have to rely on the ukrainians telling us the truth and there's been a lot of speculation and accusations that they're not telling the truth that they're keeping their um casualty reports as low as possible in part to not demoralize people and also to exaggerate their successes to nato so we continue supporting them so that's concerning and oh, again it's not unprecedented because i've seen this attitude in my own experience um, people in intelligence and operations do tend to just go on the internet and find open source material um it would be it would be much harder for them to try and get raw data themselves so they just take the easy route and um, unfortunately the culture kind of encourages this too because you do have to these are daily briefings you are on a you have a fairly large workload you're expected to be looking productive even if you have to exaggerate how productive you are and so it's very easy to just go on a website like oryx and see this the numbers for destroyed russian tanks that he calculated and just use that and not verify it at all so essentially if oryx is publishing disinformation or maybe he's not deliberately publishing disinformation maybe he has good intentions but he's just sloppy or he's wrong that mistake gets repeated all the way to the top in official channels that's very serious and um it's happened before so like for example operation anaconda in afghanistan in the early phases of the afghanistan war there were accusations that the taliban casualties had been grossly exaggerated for the good press and that really we had done this huge encirclement operation and captured and killed almost no one it was a huge waste of time and it was just a media sensation there is a tendency for this to happen there is a huge motivation to exaggerate how well you're doing because if you present because no one likes to be a messenger that set that gives bad news it's easier to be a messenger delivering good news so it's just it's very nice to say ukrainians are winning they're doing great and say that every day and it's not controversial so those are the two main points i wanted to make today um I'll, again i'll include the links in the uh description and there's also the previous video which you can watch for a more in-depth description of what was seen in the slides and uh, thanks for watching